Welcome to another episode of the Meal Prep Monday podcast. I'm your host and founder of Prep Dish, Allison Shop. Today is part two of our, I guess, mini series on ice, aka our I live in Texas and it's really hot, so I want to talk about ice. <laughs> this this episode today is less meal prep related. Last week's episode was on my favorite iced tea. You don't need to listen to one or the other necessarily, but if you want to head back and listen to that, if you missed it, it is part of this little mini two-part series. Uh, Before I get into today's content, if you have not tried out the Prep Dish time-saving meal prep meal plans, head to prepdish.com slash MPM, short for Meal Prep Monday, to try these meal plans for free for two weeks. This is a great way to have your meals planned out for you for the week. We give you a grocery list. All you have to do is either go to the store. I like to get online, put in my grocery order, and then we give you very specific meal prep instructions. So that way, when you get to dinner time, all of the hard work's done. Dinners are quick, easy, healthy, tasty, all of the things. Hopefully, your family will love it and, of course, more importantly, you will love it because it will make life so much easier. Head to prepdish.com slash MPM if you have not given us a try. Okay, so again, continuing on the ice theme. Last week's ended up being more related to meal prep. It's, you know, batching out my favorite iced tea to keep me cool on these hot Texas summer days. And today's episode is a little more fun. It's two different... I guess one is ice, one's less ice. Anyway, two things that I'm loving this summer, and I'll just jump right in. So the first one is ice dunks. I am loving dunking my face in a big bowl of ice every morning, every night. It feels so good. It's supposed to help with like puffiness and inflammation in your face, helping to reduce the look of fine lines and wrinkles. None of this is, you know, like these claims, but if nothing else, it actually just feels really good right now. I've been doing it for the past kind of few weeks. And the first few times it does not quite sting, but you know, it's a little bit shocking when you put your face in a bowl full of ice. So when I make the bowl full of ice, I put water in the ice, let it set for, I don't know, a minute or two. So the water is like fully ice, ice cold. And I think I saw this on Instagram and thought, oh, I'll give it a try. And it really was just so refreshing. I didn't do a ton of research on all the claims behind it. I do feel like my face looks brighter, of course, because it's just been a bucket of ice, but it's also supposed to reduce, like I said, the look of those fine lines and wrinkles. And I'm just really enjoying it. So it's an easy one. I do it every morning. I try and do it at night. Nighttime, sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. But morning, I'm pretty consistent with putting my face in there. Uh, my kids seem to enjoy it too. Sometimes there's their dunks are a little quicker than mine. I saw kind of a few different places. One place said 30 seconds. If I actually set my timer for 30 seconds, I am not able to do 30 seconds. I try and count to 10 really quickly a few times and then pull it out. Sometimes I'll do like 10 seconds, pull my face out, do 10 more seconds. Um, I don't think there's like an exact way that it has to be done. But if this is something that sounds fun or funny to you, I would encourage you to try it. It's like I said, something that I've been really enjoying. I maybe I'll have to update you in a year from now if it's something that I've stuck with. But for now, it seems to really be sticking as a new habit, a cheap, easy, almost free skincare habit. So there you go. I'm not usually giving skincare advice here on this podcast, but that's my skincare advice for today. Uh, Okay. So the next thing that I'm loving not quite ice, but it is cold showers. Again, I'm not going to go into huge detail on all of the science behind this, um, but I know the cold plunges are really popular right now, like where you buy the whole bathtub. I don't have one of those. I simply do a cold shower every day. This is something I've tried a few times in the past. So earlier this year, I decided I was going to try and like have it be one of the you know healthy habits that I 
that I do. And I didn't really stick with it. I kind of liked it, but somewhere along the way it fell off. And then right now, because it's so hot here, cold showers actually feel really good. So my method that I use is when I go into the shower, instead of letting it run until the water is warm, I just jump into the shower as soon as I turn it on. And I've timed it. It's about a minute and a half where it's really cold. And then after that, it warms up. And depending on the day, some days I'll jump in after my walk outside and I'll just do a quick rinse off for a minute and a half. So I get my minute and a half of cold shower and then I jump out. Um, if it's nighttime or I want more of a relaxing shower, I will, or if I'm washing my hair, I'll do the minute and a half of cold and then just let it turn to warm water and continue my shower as I go on. I've heard of people doing like ending their shower with a cold blast, but to me, it just makes more sense, one, not to waste water to start with the cold and two, to start with the cold and then get the warm after because the warm feels better. So I'd rather get the hard part out of the way first. <laughs> so that's, that's the method I have been using. So I have noticed maybe a few things. The one really objective thing that I've noticed is I wear an aura ring and my HRV. So heart rate variability higher in general is usually better for your HRV number. And I have noticed the average for the month that I started doing cold showers went up one or two numbers. And I usually don't have a lot of variation in that number month to month. So I'm guessing that maybe that was the reason why I've heard other people say that it can positively impact HRV. So that's what I'm giving. I'm crediting my cold showers to the increase I've seen in my HRV. It's not super significant, but it's there. And the other thing which I've heard people talk about is it really helps mentally. Like I love doing it first thing in the morning. So, you know, I go for a walk at some point early on in the morning, earlier and earlier in the summer because it's so hot. And so after, and afterwards I do need to do a quick rinse off. And so I do these cold showers and I think it just mentally gets your brain prepared to do hard things the rest of the day, right? Like maybe recording a podcast, even if it's felt hard to me, it's, not as hard as getting into an ice cold shower. So if you get that like really hard thing done first thing in the morning, then everything else you have to tackle on your to-do list seems a little easier. And oddly enough, I sort of crave the cold shower. It's like in the moment, it doesn't feel good, but I still like it. I don't know. Maybe there's some endorphin thing going on there. I I have not gotten really deep into all the Wim Hof stuff, but I know there's a lot of people that are way more into this than I am. Like I said, there's people that have cold plunges and all of that. For now, I'm just doing, you know, a minute and a half of a cold shower most days of the week. I'm really enjoying it. It seems to be positively impacting some of my health numbers. So for now, I'm sticking with it. Not sure still TBD if I'll continue it on into the winter months or if this will just be like a summer habit that I keep. Um, if you are in a hot place though, give it a try. would love to hear from you if you try either of these. The, I don't know what I'm calling it, the face dunk, the ice face dunk and the cold shower. Let me know. I'm at Prep Dish on Instagram. You could also post about it in our Facebook group. It's a little off topic, but... If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know, sometimes I go a little off topic from time to time. So that is all I have for this week. Before I sign off, a quick reminder that if you want to try out our time-saving meal prep meal plans, you can head to prepdish.com slash MPM to give them a try for two weeks for free. And if you have been a longtime listener of this podcast and have not left a rating or a review, those are always much appreciated. It's really the best way that we, people can hear about this podcast. When you leave ratings, reviews, it helps our podcast to be seen and heard by more people. That is all I have for this week. I will be back again next Monday with another episode. 